Hello and welcome to Dimensions and Lines tutorial. To install add-on go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install from Disk, select Downloaded File and click Install from Disk. Then enable the add-on. Enabling the add-on will pop up new bookmark in right side panel in your 3D viewport with name on it Dimensions and Lines, here. If you click it, you will see complete add-on user interface. Let me widen it little bit to see whole text of user interface elements. You can create dimension from two vertices on any two selected vertices on any object either directly from edit mode, or from object mode. You should have only one object selected however and exactly two vertices. Black emission shader is added to dimension object. Each time, the same shader, with the same name, is assigned, if it doesn't exist, it is created. If it does exist, it is assigned to the dimension objects. Created dimension have shape determined by settings in user interface, we will get there shortly. You can of course edit all proportions of created dimension in redo panel, here. Next you can create dimension with your mouse from this button. This method has its own snap mode. Rectangle indicates snapping to vertice, triangle indicates center of edge. You can turn off snapping to center of edges with M key. Current state of real-time creation and info is showed here in the left bottom corner of your viewport. After you select first point of dimension, you can pull dimension with mouse anywhere you like. You can lock axis with keys, X, Y, and Z, and either snap to anything you like, or set second point in free space or specify length directly with number keys, again, all info and instructions can be seen here in the left bottom corner. After specifying second point, you can set dimension distance from base with mouse, or set it directly with numbers, or leave it default, if you do not move your mouse and just hit enter, or right mouse click. In this state you can also set bounding lines distance from base with mouse scroll, like this. And again created dimension can be edited in redo panel. Remake dimension allows you, as you may be expected, remake dimension. If you want to change width of dimension lines or something like that, you can do it with redo panel which will pop up, if dimension is recognized successfully. It will work only on unmodified dimensions created by add-on. It is also meant as load function for custom dimensions. This checkbox, Rewrite Redo Panel Changes, which is checked by default, ensures that each time you create a new dimension, its proportions are set according to preferences in the add-on interface. If you turn it off, newly created dimensions will retain the last changes made in the Redo Panel. So, if you have this checkbox turned off and use the Remake Dimension button on a dimension, the next newly created dimensions will have same proportions. This scale settings is affecting size of every element created and camera set up. Actual drawing or model should always be in real world units, where one in blender units is one meter in real world. If you want your drawing to fit to certain paper size, and you don't want to do scale math for yourself, you can select choose in camera, set desired paper size and try different scale settings to see how it fits your paper, you have to hit this camera setup button every time. Lines, hatches and dimensions are then sized according to your scale settings. DPI, affects only render resolution, that is being set up when you are pressing this camera setup button. 300 pixels per inch is recommendation for standard printing quality for raster images. 600 is considered high quality, and maybe you can pull this off with much lower if you don't mind blurred images. On bigger papers and higher DPI's render resolution becomes really high. For standard A4 paper with 300 DPI you get 3507 by 2480 pixels render resolution. Here you can choose in which units will dimension show the length and you can switch off and on units name in the dimension. Here you can select desired font, and here you can load fonts, it calls Blender internal operator for font loading. And here you can choose from several dimension types.
I believe that we already covered camera settings. Here you can create lines. You can create lines only on mesh type objects that contain only edges and vertices. This button will then on such selected object create lines around edges according to type, width, and of course scale, settings. Lines are hidden in edit mode, but they are visible in object mode, so they are always rendered as any other geometry. This way you can always snap to center of lines with custom snap mode, because invisible vertices and edges are ignored by custom snap, and you can easily recreate lines on changes made in edit mode on original edges, because first thing that this button do, is delete all hidden geometry. That is also, why you need to use mesh without any faces, to not to accidentally mess something up. The button does do nothing, if you use it on object with visible faces. And of course you can edit lines with redo panel. Here you can create hatches in selected area. Selection must form closed area and contain only edges. You can pull this off from edit or object mode. Objects remember what you let selected in them even if you don't see it from object mode. You can create hatches in multiple areas at once like this. Created hatch forms new object that is set up as child object to original object and with same material. You can edit and rotate hatch in redo panel. That was all for basic usage. Now I want to explain custom snapping little bit more for usage on bigger scenes. Snapping points for current 3D view position starts loading when you hit real-time mouse dimensions button. Due to Blender internal workings, it's set up to load snapping points only for 10 to 20 milliseconds, then interrupt and awaits for another event, like mouse movement. Otherwise it's freezing Blender and have really poor performance on bigger scenes. It is meant to keep something around 60 frames per second in viewport. If loading points is not finished, there is info showed in the left bottom corner. You can see that if you have some objects in your scene and keep your mouse still after clicking real-time button, or if you have big scene, points will load for some time. It ignores hidden objects, so it is appropriate to keep visible only objects that you are planning to snap to. Viewport navigation with mouse is allowed during first and second point specification and reset snap points loading. It can also cause bugs in snapping, because viewport draw is not synchronized with events calls like mouse movements and can start load points from previous state, especially if you move viewport furiously during point selecting. So if you encounter this behavior, just move viewport gently and it should reset and load snap points just fine. To keep loading points running, just keep moving mouse a little bit. Links to get the add-in and additional info can be found in video description. That is all. Have a good day.